Hi viewers. Today, we are going to differentiate between hyperplasia and metaplasia, which are basically the types of cellular adaptations. So, let's get started. Hyperplasia is an increase in number of cells in an organ or tissue, usually resulting in an increased mass of organ or tissue. Although, hypertrophy and hyperplasia are distinct processes, but they frequently occur together and they may be triggered by the same external stimulus. Hyperplasia takes place if the cell is capable of dividing. Neoplasia is differ from hyperplasia in having hyperplastic growth with loss of growth regulatory mechanism due to change in genetic composition. If we talk about pathological feature of hyperplasia, then there is an enlargement of affected organ or tissue and increase in number of cells. This is due to increased number of DNA synthesis and hence increase mitosis of cell. Hyperplasia can be physiological or pathological. Physiological hyperplasia can be further divided into two main types. First one is hormonal hyperplasia occur under the influence of hormonal stimulation. For example, hyperplasia of female breast at puberty during pregnancy and lactation and hyperplasia of pregnant women. Second one is compensatory hyperplasia occur following the removal of part of an organ or a contralateral organ in ped organ. For example, regeneration of liver following partial hepatic tomy and regeneration of epidermis after skin abrasion. Pathological hyperplasia is due to excessive stimulation of hormones or growth factors acting on target cells. Examples include endometrial hyperplasia following estrogen excess and benign prostate hyperplasia. Metaplasia is defined as a reversible change of one type of epithelial or mesenchymal adult cells to another type of adult epithelial or mesenchymal cells, usually in response to abnormal stimuli and often revert back to normal on removal of stimulus. However, if stimulus persists for a long time, epithelial metaplasia may transformed into cancer. Metaplasia is broadly divided into two main types, epithelial and mesenchymal metaplasia. Epithelial metaplasia is the more common type in which metaplastic changes may be patchy or diffused and usually result in replacement by stronger but less well-specialized epithelium. Depending on the types of epithelium transformed, two types of epithelial metaplasia are seen, which are squamous and columnar metaplasia. Squamous metaplasia is more common. Various types of specialized epithelium are capable of undergoing squamous metaplastic changes due to chronic irritation that may be mechanical, chemical or infective in origin. Some common examples of squamous metaplasia are seen at following sites. In habitual smokers, the normal ciliated columnar epithelial cell of trachea and bronchi are often replaced by stratified squamous epithelial cells. And in prostate gland, in chronic prostatitis and estrogen therapy, columnar metaplasia. There are some conditions in which there is transformation of squamous epithelium to columnar epithelium. For example, in intestinal metaplasia in healed chronic gastric ulcer and columnal met Connective tissue metaplasia is the formation of cartilage, bone, or adipose tissue in tissues that normally do not contain these elements. For example, the bone formation in muscles occasionally occur after intramuscular hemorrhage. This type of metaplasia is less clearly seen as an adaptive response and may be a result of cell. So, that's all about hyperplasia and metaplasia. Hope you like this video. See you in my next video. And also subscribe to my channel, PharmaCD, for more interesting content about pathology and medicine. Thank you.